take a look at our tale of the tape brought to you by Sheath Underwear. We got 18 against 23 years old, two youngins in the cage. This is a bantam weight bout at 135 pounds, both 5'7, both 69 inch reach. So, as Mike Goldberg would say, virtually identical. <laughs> Let's go back into Wayne and get our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, your next fight brought to you by SheathUnderwear.com is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Bantam Weight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands 5 feet 7 inches tall and he weighed in at 134.2 pounds. Fighting out of Waco, Texas. Today he looks for his second win as an amateur. This is Zach. Horton! And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands 5 feet 7 inches tall, and he weighed in at a perfect 135 pounds. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas. Today he looks for his first win as an amateur. Here is Caden Atkinson! Your referee in charge, Ruben Carrion. All right, this one just about to be underway. Here we go. I do want to point out, Zach Horton, you know, guys who have a receding hairline at, at that early age usually turn out to be exceptional people. I just want to point that out. <laughs> Horton in the blue, glove, blue gloves, Atkinson in the red gloves. Some good pre-fight energy from these guys. Some really intricate movement there from Crimson. You know, made, made his opponent just shoot in and put a stop to that real quick. Yeah, Caden Anderson went the distance his first time, lost by split decision. So he does have some ring time, even though it was his debut. And so he saw right away that he didn't like those crazy movements from Zach Horton. <laughs> And those Ohana guys, they're solid. I mean, for you know, sure. I've been fighting in the scene for a long time. Anytime I get a matchup, I'm like, what gym are they out of? You know. And the Ohana guys, they've, they've, uh, they've earned their respect over the years. Nice jab. Solid jab from Atkinson there. Oh, Ball is man. Good exchange Crimson here. Blasts him with a right hook, left hook. Oh. Kind of flicks him with a high kick. <laughs> Crimson's fun to watch. Yeah, the Crimson's got a crazy style, but it, it really is fun to watch. I mean, he's running into shots, but he's also landing some big shots. Yeah, it looks very loose in there, but he's eating a few heavy punches so far. Ooh, good level change there from Crimson. Defended well from Horton, though. I think the main thing about Horton is he's very unpredictable. It's really hard to get a bead on what he's doing. Jamada, yeah. that was cool. Atkinson looking to get the ground, the fight to the ground there for a moment. In wrestling, they call that the wizard kick. Oh man, big shots there, Atkinson. Heavy jab from Horton. Oh. Oh, little shovel uppercut there from Atkinson. Some creative striking from both gentlemen here. Yeah, it's funny the way Horton is moving. He either like zigs into a really big shot and gets a walk off KO, or he zags into a big shot. And is the one getting put down. It's an interesting movement style. Yeah, it's an interesting style to adopt this early in your amateur career. You know, the one weight class that does it the most. Look at TJ Dillashaw, look at Dominic Cruz. It's yeah. these bantam weights. Yeah, I think that's a mistake some amateurs make. Is they're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to do it like that. And instead of just, you know, trying to figure out their own style and figure out what works for them. I'm not saying that's what Zach Horton did because he's had some very effective moments here. But, you know, Caden is, uh, is, I think, taking this maybe this first round. It was an entertaining round all the same. I mean, really interesting style there from Crimson Zach Horton. 
Yeah, very loose, very light on his feet. Like you said, Alex, he's, his, his head movement is either very drastic into a punch or very drastic away from a punch. So <laughs> there's no in-between. See how that pays off for him later on in the fight, but could be very dangerous for him uh, if he zigs and zags, or like you said, he zags the wrong way. Some highlights here from that first round. Good creative striking, some good exchanges from both gentlemen. Left yeah, nice hook. left hand there from Atkinson. Again, good moments for both guys. See a high C there. Drops him almost right down on his face. Props to Horton. Could have grabbed the cage. Didn't. A lot of guys I would have right there. I would have. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't want to get slammed on my face. Yeah. All right, second round. Just about getting ready to go here. So far, been a very entertaining striking match. See what the second round has in store. That unorthodox movement already from Horton. Yeah, if you're Atkinson, like, what do you do? And like a conventional jab's not really gonna work because Horton's just not there. Yeah, I think I would throw a few jabs and see which way he tends to turn, and then just maybe throw a jab and then throw a head kick or something in the direction that he's going because he's it looks like he's kind of moving to his left every time and so maybe switch stances and just kind of throw the same jab and see if he goes the same direction throw a head kick up atkinson narrowly missing with a big left hand as he approached this clinch position looking well, to get the takedown now horton decided not to cheat again there he could have grabbed the cage again but didn't i'm just kidding we don't advocate cheating <laughs> Great sportsmanship being shown there. That's huh? right. <laughs> go, go, go. Right there. Yeah, I think th to answer your question, Alex, or Cody, this is what you have to do. This is what Atkinson has to do. He has to get him up. Make this a dirty boxing match. Yeah. Get him up against the cage. Slow this movement down. You know, you don't, if you don't want those crazy punches, you don't want that crazy movement, get him up against there. Let's get him down to the ground, do some ground and pound, or do some dirty boxing. Just get him up against the cage, block one side off, and every time he tries to retreat, just beat him up and chase him around. As you mentioned earlier there, Michael, that jab to the high kick. Atkinson threw it there for just a moment. Narrowly missed with it, but could be the uh, the finishing combination there because it is very much open. Yeah, and it'll, it'll tighten up as the fight goes along. What you see there... Horton's got some tricks of his own there. Now, one, one thing about Horton's movement is it that will fade in a fight. I don't care who you are. That will slow down as you get more fatigued. Yeah, which leaves you in those positions a little bit longer, which opens you up to those, those big punches or kicks. Under a minute left here in the second round. Exchanging of jabs there. <laughs> Saw a little retreat there from Horton, turned his back and ran. But I've never seen a run like I did last night on oh, the UFC yeah. fight night. That was a good one. That's took a for punch sure. and turned off and just took off running. Yeah. Oh, hit him with the jab. As for, see, that's where Horton was like, you know, coming in hard, Ooh. just like absorbed a jab and it made him fall. Atkinson absorbed a head kick right off the neck there as well. It's a nice body shot from Horton. Ten seconds left in the round. This one's entertaining right here at the oh, end. Big man. Flying knee from Atkinson. <laughs> man, this fight is not disappointing. <laughs> right? Yeah, I've been I'm very not sure entertaining. Who's winning, but it's fun to watch. Yeah, this is when I'm glad just to be on the side calling the action, not having to determine a winner, man. That's a, a back and forth, some good striking. Let's check these highlights out here. How about neither one of y'all ask me who won this fight after no. this was over? I'm just yeah. going to sit and watch this and let the judges take yeah, care of Yeah, we're going to let them do their jobs. Yeah. <laughs> this one's just extremely fun to be sitting here watching. See the big right hand there being landed. Guys just exchanging big punches. There's that slip you see. Catches a right hand on the, the way up, though. Yeah, both guys landing well. Both guys had some exciting moments. Uh, very close yeah, there. Jumpy. Looks like the knee caught just a, the chest a little bit, but if he's an inch further back, Alex, and that catches the chin, that's going to be devastating for Crimson. But Caden Atkinson doing a good job. I think it's very close. I think both corners need to tell these guys you need to sell out and try to knock this guy out. Yeah.
Yeah, I would say in, the, in this third round, I would tell my fighter, this is the round. Let's go get this round. We got the fight. So hopefully that's the advice from both corners. Third and final round just about to get started. Let's see if that same pace keeps going all the way through. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, both guys start off with a jab that lands. Oh, there's that knee once more. I'm loving the follow-ups. You see the hands, two, three punches with the hands, and then there's that flick kick just being landed by both gentlemen, getting the, the leg kicks involved as well. You see there Atkinson using the teeth, using the front kicks. Yeah, both guys selling out here in the third round. You can tell Atkinson again wanting to get this up against the cage. He's got to get him down to the floor, or he's got to do some dirty boxing from here, Alex. Yeah, I'm glad Horton's takedown defense is so good. You get to watch these guys strike. Man, Atkins' timing on the shots has been good every single time. Horton's just kind of on his P's and Q's defensively. Oof. Oh, oof. Yeah. Nice little left hand on his way out of there. Oof. Oh, body shot. You can tell that hurt Atkins yeah. just a little bit. Man, Horton kind of reminds me of like an amateur Ooh, version of Cup Swanson. He's keeping his hands check. down and just ripping hooks. A little low blow action. Yeah, and Atkinson on the receiving end of a cup check there. Cub Swanson wouldn't approve. No. Would not. But <laughs> yeah, this happens, though, whenever it's kind of a wild style like this. Uh, you know, it, th there's a risk of this anyways. Uh, but you add in the kind of wild style of these two guys, and both guys selling out. Yeah, that one's right yeah. on the cup, undoubtedly. For sure. And then Horton even knows it. He's like, oops, right away. So... Yeah, definitely an accident. Nothing malicious behind that. But both guys, these guys are just going at it and, uh, you know, kind of selling out here in this third round. So there we go. Atkinson back up on his feet, looking like the pebbles are OK. <laughs> this one's just about ready to get back going, taking a couple deep breaths. You know, that's always one of those ones where you, you get hit and sometimes you know it hurts. And then sometimes there's those few seconds where you're like, I'm good. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. There it is in my stomach. I think that that was an immediate one. So when you know they're bad, but action back underway here. Got just about a minute and a half left here in the third round. Oh, dirty boxing. Jeez. Horton landing about Damn. 10 shots to the body there and then going high, body, body, head. That body work, though, paying dividends right now. You can see Atkinson not a fan of all those rips to the body. Heavy right hand there from Horton. What a scrap. Yeah, Alex Horton is just willing to take those shots to the head to yeah. hit that body. He needs to stick with that body work. He needs to get out of this clinch because he had just gotten the worst reaction there from Atkinson on the last one. Yeah, you've seen all the elbows narrow up a little bit. He kind of got tense back like Cat. Everything got a little tense on him. Definitely felt the, the body shot there, but doing a great job pressing Horton against the cage to nullify that. Great takedown defense thus far from the Horton. Just about 30 seconds left in the round. Uh, just as I say so, Elu Crow, but he's back up to his feet. That yeah, was a good get up. Yeah, you can see Horton tried to that lateral drop as he got taken down, so it kind of landed them both on their hip, so he was able to get right back up. It should be an interesting exchange here in the last 10 there seconds. We go 10 seconds left. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it was a good fight. Nice little exchange there in the last 10 seconds to finish the fight out. What a scrap, gentlemen. That one was very entertaining. I'm not going to even try to attempt to see that and figure out who won that one. We'll let the judges go ahead and do their job on that one. Just a big fan, man. Yeah, if there's anything that's certain, Horton win, wins round three. Um, just volume alone, volume alone. I think Atkinson wins round two because of that jab that dropped Horton. I mean, that was by far the most notable yeah, thing. Yeah, you're, you're correct. Yeah, so, the, man, the, it may come down to round one There's being definitely the closest round. This is another one of those fights. I, you know, neither guy can be mad at the outcome because it could genuinely go either way. We have seen one split decision so far this afternoon. We'll see how close the judges think this one is here in just a couple minutes.
man, I can appreciate Horton's willingness to just kind of put both hands down and just go to the body <laughs> over and over and over. And Atkinson had to decide, do I want to defend this body or do I want to punch him in the head? So he'd defend the body at first and then go to punch him in the head, and Horton would just keep punching him in the body. So I appreciate the fact that he was willing to sell out to that. I'll take a body hook for a landed headshot any day. Like, hit me in the body, so long as I get you back in the head, I'll take that trade yeah. every single time. You know, it's crazy. It was fun to watch, man. Fun style there from Crimson Zach Horton. Yeah, and, you know, this is so far we've had some fun fights tonight. We've had, uh, you know, the ladies in the last fight. The, these guys in here, I mean, two fights that went 100 miles an hour yeah, from beginning to, back to end. Bangers. Had a, you know, this awkward style of, of Crimson. I can't wait to see him develop into a professional fighter. Yeah. Same. It looks like we've got our decision. Let's take it into Wayne and make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for your decision. Brought to you by Howler Head Whiskey. Judge Perry Hillen scores the fight 29-28. Atkinson. Judge Kevin Reap scores the fight 29-28, Horton. And Judge Ray Campo scores the fight 29-28, declaring your winner by split decision, Kaden Atkinson. Atkinson picking wow. up the split decision there. The rage raging out there for a moment. You never know when the judges get involved, you know. There it is, another split decision, second one of the afternoon and, and in a close one, fight. Even as they were hitting the third judge, I, I still had no clue who no was going to win it. I mean, that was, a, that, was a, that was as close as it gets. It was a worthy split decision. One of the few. All right, let's take it into Wayne and meet our next fighters.